Conventional definitions of social change tend to emphasize uh, shifts in things like basic rights and also institutions and, and attitudes. Very often the mechanisms for producing those kinds of social change, if you look at the course of American history, have been social movements. Trajectory is, is about adoption uh, in what we call popular culture. So it's adoption at the individual or household level of a different way of, of thinking and behaving. It, it's often a particular kind of entrepreneurship. For example, nonprofit startups. Entrepreneurship is not intrinsically aligned with innovation. It's something broader, and a lot of entrepreneurship doesn't lead to anything all that innovative. And yet, these concepts of innovation and entrepreneurship are highly linked in the way that we, in the way that we think about them. Not only, it turns out, in the business sector, but in the so-called social sector. So these are the kinds of things we have described as social innovations, tend to be new products and services. As useful as that stuff is, it's, it's, it's limited. You need people that are hugely imaginative and inspiring and, you know, who are great at, at, at working the narrative and persuading at, at a higher level. A lot of people are not thinking beyond their backyard and their kind of local reference points all that much. This really has been operating as a conversation separate and apart from the social entrepreneurship, nonprofit startup uh, sort of world to a great degree. I think we could adopt a broader and much more strategic paradigm. So one type of innovation it seems to me that would need to be on our screen is institutional innovation. Things that change the, the fundamental rules and the roles and the way in which development happens, that kind of change the script. Race to the Top is an institutional innovation of tremendous promise. What Race to the Top said was, you need to enact a set of reforms to qualify to compete. We know, given the funds available, that we're only going to be able to make a couple of those grants. Even the lottery losers benefit from the reforms. You have a bunch of lottery losers that have far more than a grand plan, they've actually enacted reforms. They can get on with the business of changing the way they run their school systems. And I think we could apply that much more broadly to many other, many other fields. The more familiar programmatic innovations, they tend to be centered on, on new practices, typically in the form of a service or a product. A, a third category would be physical uh, innovation. Smart energy meters for homes, low cost disaster resistant housing, green roofs, cultural innovation. This is everything from Oprah and what she did to reinvent what a daytime talk show could be to something like uh, the designated driver practice. It's when we spot openings for broader institutional shifts. We look for multipliers. We look for opportunities to do some mimicry, some wider testing of a potentially transformative idea. You have to take risks. You know, no risk, no reward. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. If we paralyze government, essentially by, you know, pursuing a model in which it is not in anybody's interest to take any serious risk, where is the innovation going to come from?